In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to use the MEXC Crypto Exchange mobile app. If you're looking to learn how to trade futures using the mobile app, I made a separate tutorial for that, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. In this video, I'm going to show you where to go if you want to buy some crypto using fiat, how to deposit some crypto assets onto the MEXC platform, then I'll show you all the different market types and pairings. From there, I'll take you into the MEXC spot market and I'll show you how to buy and sell crypto on spot using market orders, limit orders, and how you can use a stop limit as a form of a stop loss. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. If this is your first time signing up on MEXC, I left a link for you in the description of this video as well as in the pinned comment down below. MEXC is often running promotions for people who are signing up for the first time. These can be deposit bonuses, mystery boxes, giveaways, airdrops, and more. If you use my link when signing up, you'll be eligible for the current promotion, whatever that might be by the time you're watching this video. You'll also be supporting my channel at no extra cost to you. This video is not financial advice. This video is for educational purposes only. Always do your own research before ever using a crypto exchange, including MEXC. I also left you some timestamps in the description down below, so at any point feel free to skip ahead to a section that might be most relevant to you. Aside from that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Let's get into the video. If you're signing up to MEXC from your phone and you'd like to be eligible for the current promotion, just simply come down to the pinned comment below this video and tap on this link right here. Then you'll be redirected to a page where you can create an account using an email or a phone number. So simply choose the option that works best for you, come up with a good password, and then create your account. If you're signing up from your computer, same thing, just come down to the pinned comment below the video and use this link to sign up right here to be eligible for the current promotion. Once you create your account, you can download the app from the Google Play Store, or you can get the app off of the Apple App Store. Simply download the app and then sign into your account through the application. At the time of recording, you can see that Mexi is running a deposit and trade to earn up to 20,000 in USDT. This particular event will be ending in 19 days and 22 hours of making this video. But if you miss this promotion, all good. Mexi is often running these promotions. Sometimes they can be these deposit bonuses, giveaways, mystery boxes, and more. If I scroll down this page just a little bit, you can see that there's rewards for trading on the spot market as well as trading on the futures market. Down here, you can see that the more you deposit, the more you trade with, the more in bonuses you can earn. You can use these bonuses to place additional trades and the profits are yours to keep. If we scroll down just a little bit further here, here's where you can find the terms and conditions for these bonuses. Once you log into the Mexi app, you'll arrive on the homepage right here. Now, at the time of recording, KYC is not necessary for creating an account on Mexi, but the services will be limited. For example, you won't be able to buy any crypto using fiat, but you'll still be able to deposit crypto assets onto the Mexi platform from another exchange or wallet address. I'll also mention that a lot of exchanges are switching over to KYC, so I'm going to show you where to go to get that done just in case it becomes necessary in the future. So to get verified, what you'd do is you'd tap on your profile icon top left hand side of the screen. Then on this page here, you'll see where it says verify next to nickname. So go ahead and tap on that. And then tap on verify. On this page here, you can select your country or region from this list down below. And alternatively, you can just search for it in the search bar here, just like so. Next, you'll have to choose a government-issued document, such as a driver's license or a passport. Typically, when I'm doing KYC, I just use my driver's license. So simply tap on the option that you wish to use. On the next step, you'll have to take a photo of the front of the document, as well as the back of the document, and submit that to MEXC. So if anyone needs to get verified, now's a good time to pause the video, get verified, and I'll see you in the next step of this tutorial. If you choose to verify your account and you'd like to buy some crypto using fiat, you can get that done by tapping right here where it says more. Then on this page here, scroll down to where it says common function and tap where it says buy crypto. At the top of this page here, you'll see a menu that you can scroll left to right, just like so. And here's where you can explore all the fiat purchasing options. Simply tap on the option that you wish to use. So if we want to do debit credit, we tap where it says debit credit. And this will bring us over to an order form where we can buy crypto using fiat, using a debit or credit card. But you will have to bind your card to your account first. So to do that, you'd tap right here where it says OK. Then you'd tap right here where it says Add Card. 
And of course, KYC is required to purchase crypto this way. I'm just using a demo account for the purposes of making this tutorial. So obviously I haven't completed KYC, but you'd get a little form that pops up here where you can enter your card details and submit that to MEXC. Once your card is bound to your account, you can use it whenever you want to purchase crypto. So I'll just go ahead and close this out. When you're ready to make your purchase, you tap right here and select the fiat currency that you wish to spend. Then you can tap on this box right here and you can enter in the amount you wish to spend. So something like this. Then you can tap right here where it says USDT and you can choose to purchase either Tether or USDC, at least at the time of recording. Perhaps there's more options available to you by the time you're watching this video. But both of these are stable coins that are pegged to the US dollar. Once you purchase these, you can use them on the spot market to purchase any crypto that you want. And of course, I'll be demonstrating that in this tutorial. So I'll just go ahead and leave this on Tether. In this box right here, you'll be seeing how much Tether or USDC you'll be receiving for your spend up above. Once you have your order set up the way that you want it, you just come down and you'd tap on buy now to complete this process. If we were to come back up to our menu at the top, you'll notice that there's even a bank transfer. So if we tap on that, this will bring us into a form where we can buy some crypto using a bank transfer. Once again, tap right here, choose the fiat currency that you wish to transfer, then come down here, tap where it says USDT, and then you can choose between Tether or USDC. And once again, maybe there's more options by the time you're watching this video. Of course, you'll be able to see how much Tether or USDC you'll be receiving for your transfer. So once you have that set up the way that you want it, you'd scroll down to where it says payment methods. And if you see more payment methods than what's on my screen here, you just simply tap on the payment method that you wish to use. Then scroll down a little further and tap on buy now to move to the next steps of the bank transfer. If we come back up to the top, scroll a little further here, you'll also find some third party service providers. So if we tap on third party, That'll bring us over to a form where we can buy some crypto using fiat through a third party service provider. Once you have your order set up the way that you want it, you can come down and you can choose one of these third party service providers. And all of these are perfectly fine. I do see them on a lot of different crypto exchanges, but just pay attention to the fees. At the time of recording, the fees are not the most competitive when purchasing crypto using fiat through a third party service provider. Also keep in mind that you'll have to create an account with one of these providers as well as complete KYC on their platform. So keep that in mind as well. If you already have an account with one of these, you just tap on the service provider that you hold an account with. So simply choose your service provider, then come down here and tap on continue to proceed to the next step. Once you purchase some crypto using fiat, you'll be able to find it in your spot wallet. So to get there, what I'll do is I'll come up and tap on this X right here to close this order form. I'll tap on the back button right here. Then we'll come down here, bottom right hand side, we'll tap where it says wallets. Then we'll come down here and tap where it says spot. And here's where you'll find your crypto after purchasing it with fiat. If you wish to deposit some crypto assets onto the Mexi platform from another exchange or wallet address, you can get that done by coming down here, bottom right hand side and tapping on wallets. Then on this page here, tap where it says deposit. Then you can choose a coin to deposit onto the platform from this list right here. And alternatively, you can search for one in the search bar up above. So I'll go ahead and tap on search. And just for the purposes of demonstration, I'll go ahead and do tether. So I'll just type in USDT. Then once you find the coin you're looking for, just go ahead and tap on it. Next, you'll need to choose a network to make the deposit over. And you'll be able to see a whole list of them right here. Now, some of these networks are cheaper in gas fees as well as faster than others. But the important thing is to make sure to match the network on both sides of this. You don't wanna send coins from one network and deposit into another network, or you will lose the coins. So wherever you're sending the coins in from, just make sure it supports the network and that you select it and match it to the network on MEXC. So for this demonstration, demonstration, I'll use the BNB smart chain. So I'll go ahead and tap on that. Then on this page here, tap where it says tap to generate address. Then you'll get this little deposit reminder here. You can read that if you like, but I'm just going to go ahead and close this out. Once you generate your deposit address, you'll be on this page right here. Up at the top, you'll see a QR code. So if you're making a deposit from another smartphone, you can always scan that QR code to get this done. But you'll also be able to see your deposit address down below here. Mine's behind a box. 
To copy the address, you would just tap on these two little boxes right over here. So what I'll do is I'll send some tether from another crypto exchange and into MEXC. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap on these two little boxes to copy my deposit address. And now I'll bring Femix into frame. So I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to grab Femix right here, and I'm already on the withdrawal form for the Femix crypto exchange. Now, if you're using a different exchange like Coinbase, you're looking for a send button. If you're using Kraken, it's called a transfer button. And other most major exchanges, it's called a withdrawal button. But what you want to look for is the crypto withdrawal form. So I'm already on that crypto withdrawal form. So what I need to do is make sure I'm set to Tether, which I can see up at the top here. And then down below, I can see all the networks that are available here. Now, sometimes you have to tap on a little box and it drops down and you can see the available networks. But in my particular situation here, I can see them all displayed down below. So what I need to do is I need to choose the BSC BEP20. That's the BNB Smart Chain Network. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And now I've selected the correct network. This network now matches the network that I'm using on MEXC. So I have the correct coin and the correct network. I can now choose how much tether I wish to send into MEXC. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And in this box right here that says withdrawal address is where I'm going to paste my MEXC deposit address. So I'm just going to hold down on this box right here. I'm going to tap on paste. And now I've pasted in the deposit address for tether using the Binance chain. So now I can choose how much tether I want to send over and I'll just go ahead and tap on max. And now I'm ready to send this tether. So I'm going to come down here and tap on withdraw. Now I'm going to confirm the details are correct, that I've got the correct coin and the correct network. This looks good to me. So I'm just going to come down here and tap on confirm. And now the tether's on its way from Femix and into MEXC. Now a quick tip with this. If it's your first time sending any crypto onto the Mexi platform, just send a small amount first. When the smaller amount arrives as intended, you can have the confidence to send in larger amounts. Always make sure you have the details correct before risking a larger deposit. Once your crypto arrives on the platform, you'll be able to find it in your spot wallet. And to get there from the home page, you just come down here, bottom right hand side, and tap where it says wallets. And then on this page here, you just tap up at the top where it says spot. And you can see the tether right here that I just sent from Femix and into Mexi. You can find all the different market types and pairings if you come down here at the bottom of the app and tap where it says markets. Then on this page here up at the top, tap where it says spot. And here's where you'll see all the different market types as well as pairings on the spot market. Right here is where you can see the market types. And in my case here, you can see that I'm set to USDC. That means all these pairings down below are quoted in USDC. So if I want to buy a coin using these pairings, I'd need USDC to make the purchase. And if I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd receive USDC for the sale. If I was to tap right here where it says USDT, now all the pairings down below are quoted in Tether. So if I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd be receiving Tether for the sale. And if I want to buy a coin using these pairings, I'd need Tether to make the purchase. So simply tap on the market type then tap on the pairing that you wish to trade. Alternatively, you can search for one in the search bar up above. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and just tap right here where it says Bitcoin versus Tether. And here's where you'll find your price action chart, depth of chart, and your order book. So right here, we can see the price action chart. And this is showing us the assets performance over a selected time frame. You'll find all your different time frames up at the top of the chart here. In my case, you can see I'm currently set to a four hour. That means each one of these candlesticks down below represents four hours of time. If you wish to view a different time frame, just tap on the time frame you wish to view. So let's go ahead and tap on the one day. Now I've switched this to a daily chart. So now each candlestick represents a day of time. If you want to find additional time frames, you can tap right here where it says more. And you'll get a drop down menu with additional time frames. Once again, just tap on the time frame you wish to view. If we scroll down to the bottom of the chart, here's where you'll find some different indicators. On the right hand side, you'll see this menu scrolls left to right where you'll find even additional indicators. Simply tap on the indicator that you wish to add to the chart. So if I want a MACD, I'll tap right here on MACD. And as you can see, I just added the moving average convergence divergence to the bottom of the chart. If I want to get rid of that, I just tap on MACD again. And as you can see, I just removed it from the chart. As easy as that. If we scroll a little further, here's where you'll find your depth of chart. And in a nutshell, the depth of chart is a visualization of the order book. 
Down on the X axis of the chart, you can see the price point of the asset. On the Y axis of the chart, you can see the amount of orders on the order book ahead of those price points. So for example, if I was to hold down on the sell side of this depth of chart, just like so, now you can see I have a little gray box at the bottom giving me the price point. So the price point I'm seeing here is 42,350. Now if I look at the Y axis of the chart, I can see the size of the orders on the order book up to that price point. So if I wanted to place a sell at 41,915, I can get a general idea of how many orders are ahead of that price point. If I was to do that on the buy side of the order book, like so, and just hold down on it, you'll see I'm getting a little gray box at the bottom again. Now I can see a price point of 41,895. And of course, if I wanted to place a buy order at that price point, I can now look to the Y axis of the chart and I can get a general idea of how many orders are ahead of that price point. And those orders would have to fill before that price point on the X axis would be reached and then my order would be filled at that point. So it gives you a bit of a visualization as to what's happening inside the order book. And of course you see it jumping around a whole bunch and that's because there's orders constantly being added to the order book as well as removed from the order book. So if we scroll down a little bit further here, here's where you'll find your order book. On the left side in green, we have what's known as the bids. These are price points that market participants have placed buy orders at. On the right hand side here in red, we have what's known as the asks. These are the price points that market participants have placed their sell orders at. And they're doing this by using limit orders, which I'll be demonstrating in this tutorial. When a trader comes along and executes a market order, they're matched up with the best available price off the order book and the trade is executed immediately. And I'll be demonstrating market orders as well. When you're ready to be a buyer or a seller of an asset, you can use either the buy or sell button at the bottom of this page. Either one of those buttons will take you over to the order form. So I'll go ahead and tap on buy. And here's where you'll find the order form where you can be a buyer or a seller. You'll find some different order types if you tap right here, in my case where it says limit. Then you'll get a drop down menu with the various different order types. Limit orders, market orders, stop limits, and OCO orders, which stands for one cancels the other. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating limit orders, market orders, and I'll show you how you can use a stop limit as a form of a stop loss. And just to the left of the order panel, you'll also see the order book. So once again, all the asks are up above. So those are the price points market participants have placed sell orders and all the bids in green down below is where market participants have placed their buy orders. The number in the middle there is what's known as the mid price. And that's the price point that the asset is currently trading at. First, I'll demonstrate a market order, and these order types are nice and simple. They'll execute immediately at the best available price off of the order book. And you can see the order book to the left-hand side of your order panel as well. You can see your asks up above and your bids down below. That number in the middle is what's known as the mid price, and that's the price point that the asset is currently trading on. So to set up our market order, what we'll do is we'll make sure that we're set to spot. You can see at the top left-hand side of the app here, I'm currently set to spot, so things are looking good here. So now what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll tap where it says limit. Now we'll tap where it says market. And now we're ready to place a market order and I'll demonstrate as a buyer first. So now that I'm set to buy as a market order, what I can do is I can choose how much I wish to spend on the asset and you'll be able to see your available balance right here. So you'll know exactly what you're working with. So if I wanna spend a custom amount, I could tap right here where it says USDT and I can type in a custom amount of tether that I wish to spend on Bitcoin, just like so. Alternatively, you can just use this slider bar right here. So if I was to slide this up to say 51%, that's going to spend 51% of my available balance on Bitcoin. If I was to scroll this up to 100%, that's going to spend my entire balance on this asset. So just get this set up the way that you want it. When you're ready to buy, you just come down here and you tap on buy. And as you can see, I just bought some Bitcoin immediately at the best available price off of the order book. And now I can find that Bitcoin in my spot wallet. So if I come down here and tap on wallets, up at the top, make sure you're set to spot. And now under asset lists, you can see that I have Bitcoin on account. Now I'll show you how to use a market order to sell. So what we can do from here is we can come back down here and we can actually just tap where it says trade. And that's a shortcut to get to the order form. 
If you want to change the pairing from here, you can also tap where it says BTC, USDT, and you can change the pairing from there. But I'll go ahead and just leave this on Bitcoin. So now I'm back to the spot market order form. What I will do is I'll switch this over to sell. So I'll tap where it says sell, and I'm going to make sure that I'm set to market. Now what I can do is I can choose how much of the asset that I wish to sell. Once again, you can see your available balance of the asset right here. So you can type in a custom amount into this box here if you wish. Or once again, you can just use this slider bar. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and slide this up to 100% just for the purposes of demonstration. And once you get the order set up the way that you want it, you just come down and tap on sell. And as you can see, I just sold that Bitcoin immediately at the best available price off of the order book. If I come down here and tap where it says wallets, up at the top, make sure I'm set to spot, underneath asset list, now you can see I'm back into Tether. Now I'll demonstrate a limit order. And these order types give you the ability to place an order where you'd like to be a buyer or an order where you'd like to be a seller. But you will need the price of the asset to reach your order price before this order will fill and execute. So I'll demonstrate as a buyer first. So I'm going to make sure top left hand side, I'm set to spot. Next, I'm going to tap right here where it says buy. Now I'm going to tap right here where it says market. And now I'm going to tap where it says limit. Now I'm ready to place my limit order. And just for the purposes of demonstration, let's imagine that I'm looking at the mid price of the order book. I can see that Bitcoin's trading at 41,294. But maybe I believe the price of Bitcoin is going to come down to 40,000 before it moves back to the upside. So maybe I wanna place a limit order to buy Bitcoin at 40,000. So to get that done, I'm gonna come over to this box right here and I'm going to tap here and I'm going to type in 40,000 just like so. Next, I need to choose how much of the asset that I wish to purchase, or I can choose how much I wish to spend. And once again, we can use this slider bar right here as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and slide this up to 100%. Once you get your limit order set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and tap on buy. Now you'll have an opportunity to confirm the details are what you intended. So in my case here, I'm placing this limit order to buy Bitcoin at 40,000. I can see the amount of Bitcoin that I'll be purchasing if this order fills. And below that, I can see how much Tether I'll be spending if this order fills. So this looks good to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap on buy BTC. Now I've placed that limit order onto the order book to buy Bitcoin at 40,000. So if the price of Bitcoin falls to 40,000, this order is going to fill and I'll be buying myself a little bit of Bitcoin. You'll be able to view the details of your order if you come right here and tap where it says open orders. And here's where you'll be able to see your limit order that you placed on the order book. At any point, if you'd like to cancel it, just tap right here where it says cancel. Then tap on confirm. And as you can see, I just took that limit order off of the order book. Now I'll show you how you can use a limit order to sell your crypto as well. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we're set to the spot market, top left hand side. Then we'll come down here and we'll tap where it says sell. Now we'll tap where it says market. Then we'll tap where it says limit. Now let's imagine I'm looking at the mid price on the order book here at 41,232. And maybe I think Bitcoin's gonna go as high as 43,000 and then maybe it reverses to the downside. So maybe I wanna try to place a sell order at 43,000. So what I'll do is I'll tap on this box right here and I'll enter that in. I'll go 43,000, just like so. Next, I need to choose the size of this order. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. In this box here, I can enter in a quantity of the asset that I wish to sell if this order was to fill. And of course, I can see my available balance down below. So I'll know exactly what I'm working with. Of course, alternatively, you can just use the slider bar right here. For this demonstration, I'll go ahead and just slide this up to 100%. Once you get your order set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and tap on sell. Confirm the details are what you intended. And if they are, go ahead and tap on sell once again. Now I've placed that sell order onto the order book. If the price of Bitcoin comes up to 43,000, that order is going to fill and I'll be selling all of my Bitcoin. I can see that order if I come down here and tap where it says open orders. And here's where you'll be able to see your limit orders. If at any point you wanna cancel that order, just tap right here where it says cancel. Then tap on confirm. And just like that, I took that sell order off of the order book. Now I'll show you how you can set up a stop limit and use it as a form of a stop loss. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make sure we're set to spot, top left hand side. Then we'll come down to the order panel and we'll tap where it says sell. 
Then we'll tap right here where it says limit. Then we'll tap right here on stop limit. Now the first step to setting up your stop limit is choosing a trigger price that tells MEXC to place a limit order to sell your coins. So just for the purposes of demonstration, let's imagine that I'm looking at the mid price on the order book. I see that Bitcoin is trading at 41,268. And let's imagine that I'm thinking to myself, if Bitcoin starts falling below 40,000, maybe it's time to sell the coins because perhaps I believe that it's just going to move to a lower price point. So what I'll do is I'll use 40,000 as my trigger price. So I'm going to tap on this box right here and I'll enter that in. I'll go 40,000 just like so. So if the price of Bitcoin hits 40,000, that's going to trigger Mexi to place a limit order to sell my coins. So now I need to choose a limit price. So what we can do is we can tap right here where it says price and we can enter in a limit price. And just for the purposes of demonstration, I'll go ahead and use 39,000, just like so. Now there's a couple things to know about this. If your trigger price gets hit, MEXC is going to sell your coins for your limit price or better. If there's a better price point available on the order book when your trigger price gets hit, your coins will sell for a higher price. Basically what you're telling MEXC is what you're willing to accept. So in my case here, I'm telling MEXC that if 40,000 gets hit, I want to get at least 39,000 for my Bitcoin or better. Now, in some cases, if you set your limit price too close to your trigger price, the price of the asset can get below your limit price before MEXC has a chance to place your order onto the order book. If that happens, your coins won't sell. It'll be placed as a limit order onto the order book and you'll be waiting for the price action to bounce back up, reach your limit price before that order will fill and execute. So you won't actually be selling your coins. So if you want to use this as a stop loss, just make sure that you leave enough breathing room between your trigger price and your limit price. That way, Mexi has enough time to place your order to sell your coins if your trigger price gets hit. And Mexi is pretty fast about getting that done. But if you want this to be a stop loss and you don't want to leave that to chance, just leave a little bit of breathing room. Remember, Mexi will sell for your limit price or better. Now, in some cases, some people might think to themselves, you know what, if I can't get at least 39,000 for my Bitcoin, then I would rather just hodl it. So in some cases, some people like to use a stop limit because they can tell the exchange that, hey, if you can't get me at least 39,000, then don't sell it at all. I'd rather just hold on to it. So it gives you a little bit of an option there. So now I have my trigger price set at 40,000. So if that price point gets hit, my coins are going to sell for 39,000 or better. So what I need to do next is choose how much of the asset that I wish to sell if this stop loss was to get hit. And I'll just go ahead and use the slider bar again. I'll go ahead and slide this up to 100%. But once you get your stop limit set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and tap where it says sell. And now you can review the details and make sure it's what you intended. So mine's looking good here. If my trigger price of 40,000 gets hit, Mexi is going to sell my coins for 39,000 or better. And I can see how much Bitcoin I'll be selling and how much tether I'll be receiving. And I can even see how much of a loss I'll be taking if that was to happen. So if everything looks good to you, you just come down here and tap on sell. And now I've placed that stop limit order. If you tap right here where it says open orders and scroll down, you'll be able to see your stop limit right here. So if at any point you want to cancel this, you can just come down here, tap on open orders and over here, tap on cancel, then tap on confirm. And just like that, I got rid of that stop limit. And there you have it, your introduction to using the MEXC mobile app. Don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Also feel free to check out my other MEXC tutorials, which I've put together in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.